Hi, this is Kevin Weekly. This, what I'm going to show you here is a schematic for a coil driver I was using to um, hopefully dr deliver varying amounts of power to some solenoid prototypes I was working on. Um, essentially I was taking some magnet wire and trying to move some nails around, um, but I needed a way to give it a um, pulse width modulated pulse so I could figure out how much power it would take to to actuate um, various metal objects. Um, in any case, I used two dual 556 timers um, and you can make them out in this schematic here. So essentially I use all the basic circuits here. We have a um, an A-stable multivibrator with a potentiometer to control the frequency and um, you got some uh, some resistors there. Uh, they, I don't think they really are 10 ohms. I believe they're actually um, one kilo ohm. Uh, in any case, uh, we have the a stable multivibrator to modify frequency. Then over here we have a monostable um, monostable timer circuit, which, when triggered, will uh, turn on for a certain amount of time and that we also have a potentiometer on and what that allows us to do is change the duty cycle um, so every time it's triggered it will have an on time of so long and um, then it will turn off until it's triggered again so the output of that actually goes to a uh, jumper um, the jumpers uh, allow some user reconfiguration uh, for instance if these if to sixes didn't work out, I could always um, plug in an Arduino or something. Uh, but let's hope we don't have to do that. And here in the schematic is, of course, the power supply with a big old capacitor. I've even drawn it big in the schematic. Uh, <clears throat> this is, of course, to smooth out um, the current fluctuations when you essentially are shorting uh, through this low impedance coil which you're using as a solenoid. And then um, this here, I'm not exactly sure what I was doing here. So um, I suspect it had something to do with interfacing our 5 volt logic from a micro to the 12 volts of this system, but um, not really seeing the logic behind this right now. So it's a good thing uh, it's it's probably good to um, comment your schematics just like you comment your code um, to avoid situations like this. In any case, this jumper is where we would actually connect the output of that monostable timer to this, which is a uh, just using that 556 as a um, inverter. And yeah, it's a, it's a kind of um, complicated part to use as just a transistor, but um, that output can sync 200 milliamps, which which we could use to drive our solenoid. Um, it turns out that's actually not enough, but we can use that to drive a solenoid or actually dr drive the gate of a FET, which is what I uh, ultimately end up doing. Um, we can see that output also goes to here, so we have a complementary drive. If you go over to the uh, the jumpers over here. We have um, some options where you can, if you plug, if you plug your device into both here and here without connecting them to ground, then you have a complementary drive, and that will give you a 24 volt swing. Um, although your current will still be limited to 200 milliamps, and we also have a uh, FET here. Um, to drive the high current load, and that's actually what I end up using since 200 milliamps didn't seem to budge anything. Alright, here we have the, uh, the built circuit, so we have those two 556 timers. This one here it has the, uh, as you can see, frequency and duty cycle. We have the A-stable multivibrator and the monostable timer, um, one-shot timer, which comprise this uh, variable frequency, variable duty cycle uh, frequency source and
and then we have the 556 acting as a inverter, or two inverters in fact, and uh, finally the uh, an output connector that we have over here, and of course the, that big cap you saw on the power supply is right here. It's a surface mount cap, but it's uh, 1,000 microfarads. On the other side we have all the connectors and, and two jumpers uh, since I wasn't able to route everything on a single side. And uh, we have uh, the big old 540, um, the, the FET here with a heat sink on it, um, which does get very hot. So right now I have the power actually is plugged in right now and I have my oscope hooked up to that frequency generator output. Alright, so here's the output of the oscilloscope. Uh, we're seeing a fairly consistent square wave here. Uh, hopefully we can, you can read these readings here. It says 12.34 kilohertz and a 58.3% duty cycle. So I'm going to mess around with the uh, frequency knob here and we can see it can go from 12.34 to if I start really cranking on this knob here there we go start shrinking so 12.34 is kind of the is the low end of the frequency and just seeing how tight we can get this so right now I'm reading that the frequency is 30 kilohertz And of course, because we're really messing with the period, and um, we're looking at one over the period, then uh, the frequency really starts getting higher. It's it really high very fast. So I'm thinking I can hit 50 kilohertz here. Oh, okay. Okay, so we can see that Chip is really struggling to keep up with that. Right now I'm at about... Uh, an average of about 47 kilohertz it's not really staying very steady at this point so you can see why I like to operate it on the low end around 12 kilohertz okay so I have it connected up to a uh, just a standard DC motor right now connected through the MOSFET port and we have that jumper plugged in uh, as you saw from the schematic, you can um, disconnect the signal there. It's also nice uh, to manually disconnect the motor without disconnecting the power if you just want to probe the signals without the motor going all crazy. So actually one thing I didn't mention is uh, because of that inverter, uh, the inverter we used in the 555, the duty cycle is actually um, kind of one minus the actual duty, duty cycle. So right now the duty cycle is around 15% and it's not enough power to turn the motor. So I'm going to adjust that. Really, uh, of course, I learned how to turn it the right way. Okay, so you can hear it turning now. If I keep turning that knob, we can uh, juice that up. Okay, so there you have it, um, 556 based uh, power driver, I'm sure there's many designs like this out there, but um, this one fits on a single sided PCB, so um, that's cool I guess. That's it, uh, thanks for watching, good luck, whoa!